Hey, it's Eben. Right here in this video, you're about to learn a key element of niche marketing. For more advice and tips to help you in business, make sure to click the link you see in this video or go to ebenpagan.com. So here's something that I call the niche test. It's a three question test to ask yourself anytime you're considering a new niche or a new product within your niche, because I actually think of products as being little sub niches themselves. So we want to ask these three questions anytime that we're creating a new niche, going into a new niche, or we're creating a new product. So the first question is, is your prospect motivated strongly by emotion? Are they emotion driven? If the answer is no, if they're not motivated strongly by fear or by desire, or by passion or by worry, if they're not motivated emotionally, well, then you probably want to keep working on your niche until you find the, the sub niche of people who is motivated emotionally. So, uh, so for example here, let's say that you were teaching people how to manage their finances. Okay. You've, you've really figured that one out. You've been investing. You've really figured out how to nail your finances, your income. You've got you know, passive income, you just got it nailed, debt, all that stuff. And you say, okay, so what, what could I really teach people here? So the first thing that you might write down is, well, I can teach people about um, saving for retirement. All right. So I would ask, is your prospect motivated strongly by saving for retirement? And my experience is that most people are not that interested in saving for retirement. It's kind of a pain to most people. It's not, it's not really what they want to do, right? What, what people are motivated strongly to do is to get money and spend it, right? Not to invest in the long term. Okay. So we would drill back down and I'd say, okay, well, what else do you know? And you know, what, what could you really help people with? And you'd say, well, people who want to save for retirement are often in debt. They often have 10 or $20,000 worth of credit card debt. And I can help them get out of that debt in three to five years. And then once they've gotten out of the debt, right, we can take the money that they were using to service the debt and we can put that into a plan that'll allow, allow them to retire a millionaire. Okay. Well, well now we're talking, okay. Because people that are 20 or 30 or 50 or a hundred thousand dollars in credit card debt, they're emotionally motivated to get out of that debt. That's something that weighs heavy on them. And the, uh, the extra bonus idea that you could then take that money and invest it and make yourself a millionaire. Okay. Awesome. Second question, is your prospect proactively seeking solutions right now? Okay. So what I didn't ask is, should your prospect be proactively seeking solutions in the future? Or should they be seeking solutions right now? What I asked is, is your prospect proactively seeking solutions right now? Okay. So is your prospect out looking? Are they motivated to the point where they've gotten up off their lazy butt and actually started going to a search engine and typing in words to do some research? Okay. Are they going out to a retail store to buy stuff to solve this problem? Are they asking their friends how to do it? Are they visiting forums and online discussion groups? Are they going to meetup groups to kind of lurk and see if they can find the answer? to their want or their worry. If they're not already seeking a solution, if they haven't crossed the tipping point of motivation where uh, they, they're, they're in action to fix the problem or to get what they want, well, then again, you have to talk them into taking action. So what we're seeking here, what we're looking for is again, a, a sub niche, a subcategory of prospects who are already seeking solutions. And if they're not, well, then you want to keep working on your niche and you want to keep narrowing it and you want to keep focusing it uh, to find people who are. Next, does your prospect have few or no perceived options? Few or no perceived options. Now, this is a big one. And the reason why we ask this question is you don't just want to start teaching on a topic that the general public knows there's lots of information about. There have been books and 
programs and you know classes being taught on it for years or decades, and there's nothing distinctive about it. Okay, so for example, if uh, if someone right now is trying to figure out uh, how to how to get into a relationship, right? They may they may be doing research right now online and saying, okay, you know, how do I get this relationship thing handled? But there's kind of a general knowledge that there are a lot of people that teach on how to succeed and how to get into a relationship. So as the prospect goes out to seek their solution, they're not in their mind saying to themselves, I don't know where to go. Okay, I don't know what to do. I, I don't really have options. Let me go look around and see if there's anything that I can find. What they're doing is they're going online and they're saying, okay, let me go buy a couple of those books that I've heard about and, you know, let me watch a couple of videos and read some blogs about relationships. Now, this one's challenging because what it requires you to do is to really listen to your prospective customers and students. It requires you to talk to them. It requires you to interact with them, to get feedback from them, to do in-person meetings, phone calls, Skype, to chat with them by email and online, uh, to send surveys to them. And what I found, this is one of the most um, kind of magical and mysterious aspects of teaching and doing information products, is that if you talk to your prospective customers and you ask them, what do you want and what do you worry about? And then you shut up and you listen to their answers and you listen to specifically what's going on in their lives, the situations that they're in, what they've tried, what they're looking for, what works, what doesn't. You'll always be able to find a whole category of needs that are emerging that these people are looking for that they can't find solutions to. Um, this really blew my mind as I started paying attention to this and, uh, and noticing it. So... You know, if I, um, let's say that I really burst your bubble because you're a relationship coach and you had your hopes up right now and you were like, okay, well, I'm going to write the ultimate book on how to have a great relationship. And, uh, and then I said this, you might say, oh, well, there's already a bunch of relationship books. Oh, I'm doomed. It's not going to work. So actually not true. And in fact, um, there's probably a lot more opportunity than you think. So what I would recommend that you do is you go start talking to your customers and say, what's the problem that you're having right now that you can't find a solution to? None of the books you've read, none of the videos you've watched, none of the audios you've listened to, you know, have the answer, but you'd really like to get it solved. Or what's your fantasy? What's the desire that you have inside of your relationship that you'd really, really love that would, it would just lead to a perfect relationship, but you've never heard of it and you can't find it out there. And if you look and you listen closely enough, you will find a huge opportunity to create a solution. One that's really unique to you. Okay, really unique to you. And by using this, uh, this technique of drilling down and looking for the emotional needs and some of the other techniques you're going to learn here, uh, you can discover your little niche where your knowledge helps to uh, help your student prospect customers to to really get the outcome they want. And then it can be your little world, you know, where you can create a new category even, uh, a niche within another niche, a category that you own and that you dominate.